Yes, I can. I can. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I will give a quick intro and then pass it right over to you to give your uninterrupted pitch. So um, just so everyone knows, really excited to welcome Casey from Unveil. Um, this was an introduction from one of our advisors at Vitalize on our um, Future of Work Advisory Board. And we're really excited about what they're doing. It's a platform for creatives to create, manage, and share content. I'm sure Casey will describe it in a much more eloquent way than I just did. Um, but they're based in Chicago. They have about 130,000 users. Um, they are raising... Um, on a safe with an 8 million post money valuation cap and have other investors, including Ghana's Ventures and Antler, among others. I'm sure Casey can provide us as well with an update on where the, the round is at and the latest on that. So without um, sharing anything else, I will pass it over to you, Casey, to give your uninterrupted pitch. Fantastic. Thank you, Caroline. I'll jump right in. All right, let me know if you can see that and then I'll kick things off. We can, it's not big yet, it's still, um, there we go, perfect. All right, so I'm Casey Lawler, I'm a three-time founder. I've been doing this now uh, over a decade as a founder. Uh, my first business was very early in the crypto space. My company launched the first ever iOS Bitcoin wallets. So we were first into the store. We raised money from Tim Draper and went through his first uh, Boost Accelerator program went on to raise from Thomson Reuters and UMB Bank, and then lots of uh, kind of big time uh, fintech investors out in the East Coast like FFBC. Um, we built a trade finance platform that was actually the first blockchain pilot for JPMC, and then went on to sell that product uh, to Wells Fargo. Uh, my co-founder has been in the gaming space now for over 12 years um, with exceptional experience um, with community building. So she was one of the first employees at Curse, which was an early competitor of Discord. It was bought by um, Amazon Games and Twitch. And then within that company, she built a product called Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons Beyond, which became the number one platform for the role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons and sold for $148 million to Wizards of the Coast. So she was the product lead, and it went from zero users to 10 million users. Um, she also then was brought on as the fourth employee and head of operations for a VR and AR startup that raised 12 million a Series A round. So exceptional at zero to one product building and community development. Uh, my lead uh, architect on our platform, I've been working with him now for eight years. He was at my first company and is also a two time founder. So between the team, we actually have six, uh, six companies founded um, underneath our belt. And then his partner, um, Oscar, they've been working together for 15 years as well. So the main question that Unveil is going to answer is where is the next great story being developed? And then who is going to be that creator behind that great story? So we have here some of the biggest media franchises in the world, almost $140 billion of brand value here. And the creators of these worlds were all in their 20s. Even the Marvel creator was actually uh, only 19 years old when they came out with the first uh, character in the Marvel Universe. So these very, very young creators were the minds behind um, some of the biggest franchises we've ever seen. But really, they were doing all of that development on pen and paper. Uh, nothing was online yet. And they were forced to go through traditional publishing channels. Uh, even George Lucas was forced to create multiple movies before he was able to produce Star Wars because no one would pick up that story. So fundamentally, they were stuck behind these gatekeepers of the publishing industry that really control distribution and audience growth. So what are we? We're taking the social media model, which allows people to self-publish, grow an audience, and then monetize their creations. We're bringing that to long-form content to writers, to animators, and future game and movie and TV creators. People that are doing this fundamental creative work of story craft and world building. So we're going to these young creatives and we're allowing them to develop these long stories that might take years. Harry Potter famously took seven years to develop. And we're allowing them to break that content down into easy to consume and easy to create content. This content will allow you to grow an audience as you're building out your story from day one. And that audience is going to be the thing that allows you not only to monetize your future content, 
but also prove to future publishers and studios uh, like, you know, the, the, the next Netflix that wants to stream your show, that what you have has an audience that can be monetized. So really uh, one of the kind of the key undercurrents here is that AI tooling is going to allow individuals to make content like a big studio. So a big part of what a studio is fundamentally, it's a bureaucracy to handle huge budgets and massive teams, teams of VFX artists, uh, teams of uh, voice actors, producers, all these different folks that are required to execute something long. Right now we're seeing individual creators starting to put out movies and TV shows by themselves because of this massive increase in productivity. So this allows our individual creators on our platform to self-publish content that previously was only able to be done by a studio. So really, again, what we're doing is we're bringing the social media self-publishing platform, but we're doing it for a different content type than your TikToks, your YouTubes, and your, uh, your Instagrams of the day. They're all focused on short form video, which is kind of incompatible to a lot of the story craft that's required to create the next novel, the next web comic, and the next story that might go to a publisher. Um, so just kind of fundamentally, the studio model is about years of development leading to distribution that leads to audience growth. You have that final uh, silver screen moment or you have that book being published and that studio or publisher puts a lot of money into that, in, into that release and marketing. That whole process takes years. The platform model all is about development, distribution and audience growth happening in days and weeks. And that's really what we're fundamentally allowing for the first time is people that are develop, developing content like Harry Potter and like Marvel, they're able to release things every day. They're able to grow their audience and they're able to gain distribution instantly as opposed to being behind that monolith of the, uh, of the publishing industry. So a little bit on traction here. Um, we are currently at 130,000 creatives. We have 76,000 monthly active users. We're actually over 1 million pieces of content, all original, created on Unveil. Uh, and we are actually at 3 million social interactions. So we just cracked over 600,000 just this month alone. So those are people commenting, favoriting, and following creators on our platform. Um, our social, you can kind of see this is a user growth. It's actually up 800% this year. Our social activity is up 2,400%. So that has doubled or tripled every single month this year. That's the stickiest thing and also the most difficult thing to get started with a social content platform. Um, so something that we're uh, extremely proud of. So this round, we've actually, uh, last week, Long Jump came into our round. So we are at 1 million, but we're willing to extend that um, to 1.25 million um, in terms of this round. We have enough to close, but we're going to have um, a little bit more able to oversubscribe this round. It's led by Antler and Graham and Walker. We also have participation from GFR Fund, which has great ties to um, both merchandising and gaming companies in Japan, including Namco Bandai, uh, then Ghana's Ventures, um, and here in Chicago, Long Jump and Network Ventures. So really what we're doing is we're allowing the content uh, development of a studio to happen on our platform. We're, able, we're enabling the social audience of a social platform and then finally, we're going to produce content uh, in the end, almost like a, a, a publisher or producer like Netflix. So we're going to be with creators from the very start, allow them to uh, develop a very large audience and finally publish to that large audience. This puts us in the same category as some of the biggest companies in the world who are in, in and of themselves distribution platforms of content. Um, those are much more valuable than uh, what you're going to see on the AI tooling side, really distribution channels are where all the money is. So really quickly, I'm just going to go through um, what the platform looks like now. This is a world. So we allow people to organize content around their stories. Um, so this is both concept art uh, related to their story. Um, anyone can comment um, or uh, favorite any of the pieces of content here. So they have lots of backstories here. Um, you know, lots of lots of concept art and templates and characters. And then if you jump into an individual character here, um, you can see uh, they have even Spotify playlists that they've linked. Um, lots of uh, content around the character galleries. We have writing, traits, and trivia. So basically anything that you need from the very beginning of your journey to start planning out um, what your characters are doing. And then also 
full social functionality so people can comment um, and follow the uh, characters that they like. So really where we're going here is building out essentially this hub for your fandom. So the space where all of your content can live and you can monetize. So all of the kind of releases that we've showed, the characters, the episodes, um, those can all be here and even put behind a subscription paywall. Um, you can also have announcements um, about when your content's coming out. Uh, people can interact with your story in different ways, like looking through an interactive map of your story or even a timeline. And then finally, where we're going, the 10-year vision here is after you've built these huge audiences, these communities of tens of millions of people, and you're ready to launch that final series, we allow you to publish that directly on our streaming platform. So the goal is you're getting started from the very beginning and when you're years down the line and you're ready to execute on that story that you built, we're here to let you self-publish that content directly on our platform and directly to that audience that you've grown um, over the course of years. And that's it. I'm happy to open up for questions. Awesome. Thanks, Casey. Investors, please feel free to jump in and ask any questions you have out loud, or if you put it in the chat, I will ask it out loud. Casey, this is a, a really impressive uh, special purpose publishing platform. Um, I think what's happened is a lot of content creators are getting lost on the billions and billions of, of videos on YouTube. So this is really, really cool. Can you talk a little bit about the economics? How do you make money and how do your creators make money? Yeah, um, the thing that we wanted to avoid initially is just immediately going to um, the advertising model. Not only does that not align with incent um, incentives with your creators, it kind of attracts uh, traffic and direction to off-platform transactions. So that's going to be to services and purchases that your ad, you know, uh, people that are splicing sometimes six to 10 ads per minute in a YouTube video or even in, a, in an Instagram reel away from our creators. So what we're doing initially is just a $6 a month, um, essentially a premium service for custom profiles and theming. So this is very similar to Discord Nitro. Discord makes 300 million a year by selling the ability to customize your profile and custom emotes. It works very, very well for your younger, sometimes less talented creators that we're gonna have on the platform who are really fans of this content. They'll be able to stand out in their social circle. They'll have sort of custom badges and uh, profiles that stand out. Then we move on to the top creators on our platform and that's really where we generate the most revenue. We're going to introduce all of the tooling that Patreon has that platforms like TikTok Shop now use. So we're going to paywall episode two of your content You know, after you get hooked chapter two of that web series that you're obsessed with. And so at that point, um, yeah, we're basically doing a 20% revenue share with subscription revenue that our top fans, uh, our top creators are driving. Do, do they, do you have a, um, a model of, of patronage? Uh, does it, you know, is it, does it, is it always going to be on a paywall on content? Um, are there are there other ways for the creators to to make money uh, by being on your platform and growing their fan base? Yeah, we're actually there's a few um, different options really for the future. The way we're viewing this really is that your IP and the community that you've developed those are the assets that you have, and so leveraging your IP as an asset, you can go through merchandising. So in the future, we could have a white label solution for selling merchandise. We could take up to fifty percent of that as a provider. And then more on the community side, if someone wants to have a private channel for their top creators where someone's paying 50 or $100 a month for access to that creator, maybe to get tips on how to be a, an artist themselves, um, we could also have sort of essentially paywalled communities, which is another tier up um, that someone could charge. So really we see the IP and the community as the two assets that we're gonna leverage. And there's lots of different ways of doing that at scale. Luckily, many social platforms have sort of given us the, the roadmap on how to monetize at scale there. Thanks. We've got a few more minutes if anyone else has questions. Um, I have a quick question, Raz here. Um, what's the relationship between leveraging the current social platforms like Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and whatnot? How do you 
balance between leveraging the shareability on those and moving them across and not competing with them, I guess. I think it's great, by the way, your platform. Yeah, the, the real difference that we found is when people post a single piece of content that is on our platform elsewhere, their goal is to actually get people to follow the entire world that they've made on our platform. They're almost like little nuggets that are like entryways into the greater story. So every time that they're sharing on another platform, the real goal is to get someone to see their whole vision, their whole story and get um, sort of, you know, wrapped up in the, in the story that they're developing. So we found like character pages are a great example. A Twitter post cannot sum up all the family relationships and traits, all of the artwork, all of the writing, the Spotify playlist, the backstory, that all lives on our platform. They're going and sharing a little snippet of that on social to get you to see that whole character and maybe discover the whole world. So we're kind of seeing them as, you know, they're very valuable. A lot of our traffic is organic social at the moment, um, but they don't encapsulate the intricate ways that the stories are being organized on our platform. That is something that I think is completely unique to our platform. And so it drives traffic from elsewhere to the place where it, the most time and effort has been spent uh, in the way that it's displayed, if that makes sense. No, no, it really does. And I, I get your point on all that. I think something TikTok did very, very well is when they launched is you did something on TikTok and then you exported it and it was branded with TikTok and then you shared that on Instagram, et cetera. I think there's a huge thing for you to do there which is stealing essentially you know the you someone's user base or collective user bases from the other platforms onto yours as well the integration between those i think is a magic source of of um of getting it out there but um thanks for that i think it's great yeah just another kind of point on there instagram just created an amazing way for you to um to to make your photos look a lot better with filters it was very basic at the time but then everyone shared those photos on Facebook, that was a way to drive traffic to your portfolio that you were developing on Instagram. And then all of a sudden you were already on Instagram and that blew up and became such a bigger social platform and, and honestly uh, generates much more revenue. Um, but it was just a tool to help make your content look better, which is similar to what we're doing at this stage. Yeah, I guess to follow up on that, uh, I think the point that was being made is it, it might be something that the platform could do to help the creators promote themselves. There are a lot of, of AI tools that, that make it really easy to take content that's built for one purpose and turn it into a series of, of posts on the more you know generic social media. If you put some of those kinds of tools in place for your creators to introduce their worlds to Instagram, to TikTok, and drive traffic to Unveil, I think that would be a value add for your creators. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, turn your your web comic, make it formatted perfectly for an Instagram post. Uh, you know, like exactly. Yeah, yeah. And cool. and there there are definitely like tools that are being developed to 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 make that process a lot easier. That's a great point. Any other questions from folks? Casey, I always like to ask, could you touch a little on possible exits? I just don't know as much about this space. And I'm curious, like, are there any large potential acquirers or would it be more IPO or what are you thinking in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I like to bring up a couple examples of earlier platforms. I think that, you know, the markets were much less developed, but they still had very impressive exits. So one was Wattpad. Uh, we've actually been in contact with the CEO. Um he had, they had a $700 million exit and they were just a fan fiction platform. We actually have 100 times both the content created and the users that they had after one year. So we're outpacing them pretty tremendously. Um, but they had a $700 million exit. Um, they exited to a company that was a web comics company called Webtoons that had a $2 billion exit. And that was also user created Webtoons. So these are two components um, of, of elements that are already on our platform and our growth has already been a lot faster. Um, those, again, I kind of consider us, I want us to get to that level where we're actually releasing a streaming platform with our content creators. Both Wattpad and Webtoons are selling, uh, they've sold over 50 shows to Netflix. So that pipeline of generating user-generated content and getting that IP onto a streaming platform exists. We want to actually make the streaming platform. And I think that's when we become, you know, the, the 10 billion plus dollar business. 
I have a quick question too. Um, in terms of, I mean, this is already a huge market opportunity, um, but in terms of further expansion, have you considered um, kind of like entering the world of gaming and game design? Yeah, we've um, actually heard from multiple indie game developers, even um, one of our investors who was doing due diligence on us uh, had a gaming company, indie game developers, they do all of their concept art and character creation and creating the sprites before they actually develop the game. They do a lot of the story craft before. And they said having a built-in space to run their community, they would pay thousands of dollars a month just to have like a well-moderated, curated space where they could essentially promote their their um, game before they go to Steam or one of the publishing platforms. So while we won't have like gaming support likely in the future, it can be the space where people essentially do all of their community building um, and run their fandom sort of of their game on our platform. So yeah, totally. Uh, we definitely see that. It's awesome. We do have a question that came directly to me in the chat around copyright and plagiarism and kind of how do you moderate that on your platform? Yeah, so, you know, until we until it gets to the point that it's um, being monetized, like users can put up content that, um, you know, maybe derivative of existing uh, franchises, but the moment it becomes time to, to actually monetize, that's when it's very important that they own the IP. Um, something that is very fundamental to our business, but it's a little bit in the weeds. Um, collaborative IP is always something that studios are very reticent to touch because they don't know um, you know, essentially, if the royalties are being paid out in the right percentage to, you know, who owns that IP, it actually kind of veers a little bit into securities law if you're thinking about how IP is going to be transferred if it's collaborative. That's only if content is being sold to a publisher or studio. It's very different than um, the YouTube model where YouTube, they actually, you know, creators uh, retain complete control over the IP that they've developed. YouTube is a platform you pay for the platform, advertisers pay for the platform, and they have a revenue share with creators. So we have the opportunity to have the first platform for collaborative generated content where we charge for access to the platform through a subscription service similar to Netflix. And then we would pay out a revenue share based on how many people are watching that. So we would have essentially that first place for multiple creatives to work together on content where we don't have to then sell that IP to a studio who might not want to touch it because there are multiple people involved. They would retain ownership of the IP, but our platform would be ge generating the revenue that we would be sharing with them. Um, so that again, doesn't exist. It's because the studio model has always been separate from the YouTube and uh, publishing model in terms of user generated content. Very helpful. Two, Thank you. Two sort of technical questions. One, what kind of, of know your customer are you doing? Is this an environment where we could start to have AI content creators gathering fans? Um, or are you doing validation of the creators as human beings and knowing who they are and, and all of that? Because that kind of goes to the copyright question. Um, and the other is what, um, what level of... Uh, quality on the output so is it 4k level output could you could you stream unveil to a, a large format tv and still get good quality content so in terms of the you know the creators and knowing if they are who they say they are if they're they're bots these are relatively small so i guess i would say that the communities themselves are relatively tight-knit and it's very difficult to just come onto the scene and have an unbelievable portfolio, people will very quickly find where the artwork's been stolen or they have an eye for if it's been generated by AI. So we actually leverage our community. We already have full moderation, but we also have reporting built in, which allows people to report content that they think um, you know, is not owned by someone. The great thing is that all of this works in progress and people's drafts are all shared on the platform. That's also how they're growing um, their audience. So no one just comes on the platform with like unbelievably well-developed content overnight and they don't have a trail of being on other social platforms and no other people in the space. We haven't really found that yet. Um, so it's been relatively easy to, to figure out who's real and who's not. Uh, quality of the output, we haven't actually released um, video support. We have lots of creators who have gotten to the point that they're animating things. They're posting on YouTube now and they're asking for you know video support on our platform. Our big early differentiator is that we go to the 
less skilled, very early creators who don't, they're not animators yet. They're doing write, written content and illustrations. Um, so that was the logical space where we had the most users that were the demographic that we wanted. And so we started there. Um, we plan on growing the platform skill level wise and in, in what content we support kind of as our creators are growing. So that's, you know, in the roadmap, but we're not there yet. Thanks, Casey. All right. <laughs> Final call for questions. Um, I'll ask just one quick question for the, um, for the studios looking at potentially investing this, is there just one user vertical, I guess, so all users will just be users on the platform? Is there going to be a studio only access for the Netflix and the studios and such that want to buy the content? Or what's the mechanism for a Netflix to engage a creator to purchase that bit of content? Yeah, traditionally how it's done is us as a platform will actually get an option on that IP. So we would pay, you know, 50, 100 grand to a creator. They would have the time and space then to finish out. Maybe it's the the 10 part series that they want to pitch to Netflix that might be executing it. That might actually be just finishing the story and selling it to a studio to actually they do the animation work within um you know, they they're, they might have a small um, animation studio. So really um, kind of that process is very similar to the music industry and, and the publishing industry where you provide money up front and then you get like a two year period where you get to negotiate the distribution deal with a Netflix, with a random house, with, um, you know, a Hulu or Paramount. So um, that's how Webtoons and uh, Tapas have done it and, and Wattpad. And those um, deals have been super lucrative because they're the first people who are offering these deals, but they have all the metrics on the back end to know that the story is becoming incredibly popular. They know the audience is going to be there and it's going to convert. Um, a good example is also it touches every single market. Um, Wattpad is the number one show on Netflix in Indonesia. Uh, they don't have anyone at their company from Indonesia. Uh, they had a creator who created something awesome. Netflix wanted to get into that market. They said, who do we know that's got a big audience? He's in Indonesia. They didn't know anyone. So they went to Wattpad, found someone, and now it's the number one show after they created it. So I think that's just the unbelievable power of a user-generated content market. Creators niche into different spaces in even different regions so that they can capture new audiences themselves and grow. And that means, you know, eventually you can kind of touch every single market, which is super valuable. Yeah, cool. So um, if if I hypothetically create an idea on Unveil and Netflix buy it, does Unveil have equity in that automatically? Or could I just sell that to Netflix and leave Unveil? Or what's, what's the process there? So what you're buying by providing that upfront capital is a large chunk of that distribution deal. So usually it can cover... Sometimes it just covers maybe like the first release, like Harry Potter one, but sometimes it'll be like a three book or a three series deal. And you get sometimes 50% um, of the, uh, the, you know, the um, what's what the streamings uh, streaming uh, profits are, what the merchandising is for that run. Um, it's usually a, a pretty big bulk of the um, of the total amount of revenue that's generated in the first few episodes. Like, uh, Harry Potter, that she made $4,000 on the first book. It wasn't until book five that she started making millions of dollars. And those were because of the distribution deals that were being um, created for her. Yeah. And if I, so, but it, does Unveil own equity in that, in that process? Or like, so if I create my concept in Unveil and sell it to Netflix, can I leave Unveil theoretically? Or does Unveil own equity in that concept for it being discovered through Unveil? Does that make sense? Yeah, they, they would. That's what the that's what you're purchasing. That option is like we're yeah, getting. Cool. Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Awesome. That's fine. That was awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Any outstanding questions from anyone? Cool. Well, we really appreciate your time, Casey. We will keep you posted as we gather survey results from our members on the two companies that have pitched today. Um, so you'll expect to hear from us in the next few days. And we very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much. And uh, great questions. It was nice meeting you all.